I'm going to call to order the meeting of the Select Board for January 18, 2022. Um, the meeting protocols are posted here, and I'm sure you're familiar with them. Please um, wait to be recognized before you speak. Raise your hand. Wave at us if I don't see you at first or if someone doesn't see you. We will um, give everyone a couple minutes to talk. You'll not be called on a second time until anyone who wants to speak to an issue has had an opportunity to talk. Um, I want to remind you to um, address the chair and if you have um, anything to say a second time, if time allows, you'll be called on. We're going to try to keep the discussion of each item to about 15 minutes. Thank you. Um, our first, our next item on the agenda is an interview for membership on the EDC. Marion Abrams, I see that you're there with us. Yes, just trying to get my camera to turn on, but I'm oh, here. Thank you. Um, you want to tell us about your interest in the EDC and how long you've been around here and what meetings of the EDC you've attended, how many times, and just a little bit about yourself and your interest in the committee, please. Sure. I, um, I lived in the town of Pittsfield, Vermont, for about 28 years, and just before things shut down for COVID, our family moved to Woodstock. At the time, we had two boys, one in the middle school and one in the high school. He's since graduated. Um, so we've been in Woodstock and haven't really gotten involved in the community as much as we'd like to because of the circumstances, but uh, was very involved in the Pittsfield community. And I'm a great believer in the power of local government, and the EDC seemed like a great way to have a positive impact. I've attended one of their meetings so far and had a few conversations with uh, members of the EDC and the chair of the EDC. Um, in the Pittsfield community, I uh, reopened the failing library. It was an all-volunteer library and ran it as the board chair for 10 years. Um, I also brought EC Fiber to the town of Pittsfield, um, which is now the only town that has full border-to-border -border coverage by EC Fiber. And um, I guess that's it. Feel free to ask me any other questions. Um, you, do you know the meeting schedule? And is that going to be a possibility for you to attend their meetings? Yes, it, should be, it shouldn't be a problem to attend most of the meetings. I'm sure things will come up from time to time. And the Economic Development Commission has various um, work, working groups. Was, do you know which one you'd be most interested in, knowing what you do about the commission? Do you have any favorite favorite group? Housing, marketing, events? Yeah, um, I'm still getting to know exactly what the roles of the different committees are, but I would guess that it would probably be marketing or events uh, in, in large part because of my background, which is in more of the marketing communication side. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sure. What questions do you have for us? Uh, I don't have any questions at the moment. I asked lots of questions to the chair of the EDC and uh, again, learned a lot at the meeting. And um, so I just will continue to listen and learn. All right. Um, select board. Do you have any questions for Marion? No, no, no questions. Ray? No, I do not. Carrie, do you have any questions for Marion? No questions for me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Marion. Um, we will, um, we may not make a decision for appointment this evening. Um, I don't know how many openings there are or if um, there are more candidates to interview at our next meeting, but we will keep you posted. Jill, did you have something? Jill, did you have a question? I thought I saw somebody light up other than... Okay. I didn't, Mary, but um, I think it would be worth asking John Spector how many 
I could ask John Spector now how many vacancies yeah. there are and if he has any other candidates. Thank you. Because it might be good to have Marion involved in the decision making that's coming in the next few weeks. So I'm going to move on for now, and when Jill gets back to me, we'll revisit that. Okay, Marion? All right. I do have a couple of things that I need to do tonight. Would you like me to stay oh, for the meeting? That's or? entirely up to you because we will contact you if we okay. need you to come back, if we have any other questions, or if we have a decision this evening. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I have an addition to the um, posted agenda. One thing I have is to consider um, putting an, a special article on the uh, town meeting warning. I also have um, a, the addition of, we have, oh, we have just a couple more petitions to consider that's part of an item that's already on the agenda. Is there anything else we have to add that you have, Bill? I do not. Okay. All right. Balance. What I have to add to the agenda is um, a request from Jeff Martin to add the EEI proposal if it doesn't make the um, budget, and he has a he ha is concerned that it might not make the regular budget. So he'd like us to consider it, and you have a letter before you or that was sent to you in the last hour or so. Relay oh, it's right here on the table, so we all have it. Okay, so then we'll talk about that when we talk about other articles that we have to put on. Thank you. Citizens' comments. Hi, Susan. Any citizens' comments that do not pertain to anything that's on the agenda already? Hi, Mary. This is Michael Caduto calling for just uh, oh, zooming hi, in. Oh, hi, Michael. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. We do nice have your you. letter. We have your letter, and we have it before us. And that's okay. the that's the item that I just spoke about that we'll be adding to the agenda when okay. we get down in the part of the, for the different articles and town meeting morning topics. Okay. All so right. I should wait to wait to read it then. Um, or can I read it now? Well, let's, let's you can read. Wait. Why don't we, if we're going to do it all at the same time, let's stick to the agenda. We're going to stick to the agenda and ask <laughs> you to read it at a later, few later moments. Now, you're okay. um, welcome to take a break from us and come back and check in and now and then and see where we are with the agenda <laughs> and when we'll be okay. in. Okay? Thank you. Sure. I'm zoom, kind of zooming in from another meeting, so maybe I'll, I might do that. All right. Thanks. What would be what would be the most appropriate time to read um, it then on the agenda? Let me look at this. You want to do it, and even though it's down at the bottom, you've got other business. Oh, that's what. Um, why don't you come? Pardon me, Ray. Isn't that under new business? Petition um, it's under. Discussion? It's under well, new business. There, it's the petition. Uh, no, it's. Um, well, we'll be talking about the warning well, with the petition requirement, the discussion. So okay. that would probably be, I'd say it's going to be about a half hour. Just, okay. Just guessing, I hope. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <laughs> Fingers crossed. It's 610 <laughs> now. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. John. Do we have time for another question? Yes. Uh, this is Bill Corson. Hi. I just wondered how we left things from our joint meeting with the village trustees about the parks manager. We talked for that for almost an hour at our meeting and I didn't really know how that was left. Are we going to address that again before the um, We are not March talking meeting? about that this evening. It is not yeah. on our agenda. We will we are having another budget meeting early next right. week. So okay. we'll hopefully be um, nailing Discussing down the budget there. at that time. Okay. Thank if you, Bill. Really, uh, if I can be of service at that meeting or need anything additional, please let me know. Thanks so much. Thank you. John I see that you've joined us. Is that at the request of someone who was here a few minutes ago? Yeah, well, not at her request. I completely lost track of the time, and I just, I don't mean to be disrespectful. I feel badly both 
for Marion and disrespectful to the select board. I should have been part of the discussion. So I, I mean, at least listening in. So I apologize. Is there any information I can give you, or is it the discussion? How many passed? openings do you have on the EDC? We have one opening right now on the EDC. We have eight members, and Devin Kurtz has stepped down as of January 1st, I think, or January 3rd. Okay. And so now we have one opening. One opening, and is uh, Marion. I don't remember that we have a slate of candidates on hold for the EDC. Am I wrong? You are not wrong. My my understanding, I mean, is that Marion was the only applicant. I meet with any applicant that Nikki informs me about, and she's the only one that I met with um, she's to the give only, them a briefing. That's what it appears to me, that she's the only one that has... Um, we have an applicant. We have any information about, or that's been on an agenda recently. Right. No, I. I don't know. I. No one else. I mean, there, there have been people over time who have expressed interest, um, and I kind of go back to them from time to time. But for this cycle, Nikki announced it, and 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 that was the only application that she okay. sent to me. And so that's the situation. And again, you. I apologize for not being no, available. No, you're, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. It happens. Thank you. Um, so, Bill, yes. we're at the manager's report, okay. please. Absolutely. Uh, several items here. Uh, the first is uh, the final rule in the ARPA funding has come down to the Department of Treasury, and they've given a lot more flexibility now to uh, funding some different items, including uh, downtown projects and also expanding uh, lost revenue now there's you no longer have to meet the formula it can be it can actually just be if you want to use your funds for the lost revenue you can do that so um, you do negotiations are underway for the renewal of the dispatchers contract as well as uh, forming the contract for the town employees um, the advertisement has gone out to recruit members for the town hall rejuvenation committee Great. Um, Mary, you and I met with the listers last right. week to discuss um, the uh, reappraisal for, for, for a townwide reappraisal. Uh, we discussed possibly filing an appeal to see if we could have that either delayed or be examined, but based on some research by the listers, it would not be prudent to do so. It would cost more money and some, some other issues that could be involved there. So we decided not to do an appeal. So this would not start until 2021, and it will be completed by 2020. Excuse me, 2024. 20. Yep. 2020. You said 21. You said 21. You said oh, 2021. 20. Oh, 20. That's 20, gone. 24. That's gone. 24. <laughs> uh, and then complete by 2026. I think the mask is. <laughs> that might be part of the problem too, too. And um, so, and they, that would be paid for out of the all the allocation that the listers get through the state annually. So. There should be a very minimal impact, if any, on taxpayers. So that should be good news. Um, and then the final thing is Tim Lines has been promoted to wastewater chief operator upon the retirement of Wayland Lord. Thank you. And also, uh, although it doesn't say it in the agenda, I do have a financial report mm -hmm. for you. And I just want to point out a couple of things here. First of all, the tax revenue. That includes the all the taxes that have been billed. That is not what's been collected, first of all, um, because of the type of accounting that we use. Um, the fees and permits are way down. I'm not sure. I'm going to look into that. I don't have an explanation for that at this point, but I will get back to you on that. The interest income is low because interest rates are down, and we don't have as much in our savings account. Um, Culture and recreation, that is down to, um, I did have an explanation for that. Let me look at, so that's because that includes um, funding from, or requests from uh, quite a few of the um, nonprofits. Oh, of course. So we've not gotten that yet. And then uh, select board, uh, that is, that just includes some things that just have not been, they just get billed or paid for a little later on. Well, I and find it interesting that we're at 
half the year, so we should be right around 50%. You, you and be, some you, are, but some, some are, are not. definitely That's not. That's I'm trying to point out here. And then finally, <clears throat> bridges and storm drains, that's way down. I think it's just because, of course, this time of year, we're not going to be doing that type of work. That's going to be something that I'll, I'll be discussing with, um, with Elijah, Elijah for the spring and early summer. All right. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Thank you. Carrie, questions? Gentleman here? No questions. Thank you. You guys all set? Yeah, all set. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next agenda item is overweight truck permits. These are due for all um, the businesses and large truck um, contractors who use our town roads uh, to deliver material for driveways and private roads and work in people's properties. The two we have today our Able Waste Management, which is a, one of our waste disposal organizations, and Newport Sand and Gravel, which also does business as Carroll Concrete. These must be renewed every year by March 31st and are good until March 31st of the following year. There is a limitation that they um, do not go on bridges on class three roads. They're not valid for class three or four roads without special permission. And these remain in place until they are um, removed or until May 15th and often toward the end of April when the roads start to dry up, the um, restrictions for um, these permits are removed. And if anything has to happen on one of the roads that are posted, which this posting will happen probably in a couple of weeks, um, they can call the highway garage and get permission from Elijah, the highway supervisor, who will allow them to go on the roads mostly in the early morning hours when roads are still frozen. So, line, uh, Casella, no, Able Waste or Newport Sand and Gravel? Yep, that's, uh, that seems to be okay. Uh, the high, high weight is, uh, of course, that tractor trailer, that's a six axle, so yeah. that's a special exception. They can register for the high, high sales line. Yes. Is that a motion to approve those? Yeah, I make a motion to approve it. Is there a second? I second it. Motions made and seconded to approve the two overweight truck permits, um, Able Waste Management and Newport Sand and Get Gravel, also doing business as Carroll Concrete Company. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, and we also require a certificate of insurance and both companies have submitted those to us. Thank you. Okay. Our next item on the agenda under old business is related to the South Woodstock Wastewater Treatment Plant bond discussion. Do you want to start the conversation or do you want me to do Just go that? ahead, Mary. All right. So um, as everyone knows, in 2020, when the bond was approved to rehabilitate the South Woodstock wastewater treatment plant, um, the wording on the ballot was the same as the wording on the article, which was for the, which was, okay, 
which was for the emergency services building. And under those, under the wording of those two articles, it indicated that, um, well, of course, the bonds would have to be repaid and the um, wording was a little confusing as it was written because it was stated that um, only people using the wastewater facilities would be paying for the bond. And there was a study committee that um, worked last spring and summer to determine what was the correct wording, et cetera, was the, the ballot article incorrect, what did the town of Woodstock do, and we found a variety of options. We found that um, at the last major upgrade of the main wastewater treatment plant, there was um, an agreement that sewer users paid for 80% of the cost, the bond for that, and people who did not use the sewer paid 20%. That was a fee that was added to the annual tax bill of all taxpayers, property owners, residents of Woodstock. Um, and that was, I believe, around the mid-1980s. All sewer, the first bond was in 19, 68. The next one was in 1980, and that bond was paid off. We got the receipt for that bond being paid in full in around 1998. We have it framed and hanging. Um, and since that time, any sewer improvements, we had a small bond in the early part of the 2000s, and um, Everything was handled through the 80-20, and that's how things were paid. This question, there was a committee of about eight or 10 people, and um, they were unable to find any information, and brought that to us a few months ago. We have spent countless hours looking for information and the sewer billing for the annual sewer users are about to go out at the end of this month. And um, time being of the essence, I was fortunate yesterday to uncover an ordinance that was um, that was signed in 1986. And there is an article in this ordinance. Is Tom Debevoise on the yeah, yes. phone? Okay, good. Um, I had spoken with Tom Debevoise, who was a select board member at the time of this ordinance being passed. And he remembered that the 80-20 agreement was only good for that project that was happening. And he was quite certain there was information in the records that would lead us to see that it's sewer users who pay for the bill, for the bond that we have now. It's a 30-year bond, and it's $2.8 million. It's a lot of money. And article, article eight, nine, it's article nine, article nine section, three. section three of this um, signed ordinance, May 13, 1986, says the rents and receipts 
for the use of such wastewater collector and treatment system shall be used and applied to pay the interest and principal of the sewage system bonds of such municipality as well as the expense of maintenance and operation of the sewage system. So our interpretation is that the sewer users will pay for the bond. Now, um, there was earlier discussion that it would only be the South Woodstock sewer users. That was inaccurate. There are only 46 users of the South Woodstock plant. There are a total of 904 users of the sewer district. Now, our sewer district comp is comprised of the three plants. We have a plant in Taftsville, we have a plant in South Woodstock, and we have the main plant. And at last count, we had 904. And there may have been a few people who have connected to the sewer plant since we last billed and had that number. They're working on the billing now. It will go out in a few weeks. So um, first, I would like to um, I would like all of the select board to acknowledge that the article relates to sewer users paying for any bonds, any major construction programs that go on at the wastewater treatment plants. I agree. You got it? See it? You good? Ray? Uh, I'll I have questions, so and I just I haven't had time to review it. Okay. So I'm, I'm carrying. Right, so yes, Ray, go ahead. I'm abstaining right now, but I have some comments to make after you get there. Okay. <laughs> Carrie. I don't have any comments to make right now. Okay. Thank you. Um, I. I want to say this. Yesterday when we were talking about um, our overall operating budget, we, we, were, we are struggling with our budget because everything is so high and has gone so different than we would like it to be. And Carrie, you pointed out that everything costs more no matter what or where it is. And that includes these construction projects that could once be done for as little as $240,000. There's so much more now. And going forward, there may be some, have to be some adjustments to um, these kinds of projects. But for now, this is what we have and this is what we're working with. It's the ordinance that's in place, and it was, um, there were a couple amendments and an addendum or two written for that ordinance in, 2000, in 2011 and 2012, and those two, that piece remains intact. So, next part of this conversation is the sewer billing that's going to go well, out? Wait, I, have, I have a couple. All of right, fine, about, sure. About yes. This. First of all, um, that doesn't change the way the ballot question was written. And the ballot question was written as all taxpayers. Didn't say sewer users. So that's one question. And the other question is if, the, if everyone, then the only people that should, if the only people that are responsible for this are the sewer users, those are the only people who should vote on whether or not to approve a bond. I can't go to your house or anyone else's house that has a septic system and say, I want you to replace that, but you have to pay for it, not me. That's just not, the town can vote to um, uh, guarantee the bond. The town can't vote to say that the sewer users have to pay for it unless the sewer users vote to pay for it or not. 
It okay. Is not. Um, since the beginning of this um, question occurred, and I was not on the committee. Were you on the committee? Yes. Okay. So you and there's a couple other people who were. Yep. You can answer this question. Um, but I know that since that committee started to meet, our, we were tasked with finding this information, what our ordinance was, how the sewer project bonds, what was, the, what was our order, how do we pay for those things? And we were, we were tasked with coming up with a compromise. Okay. Susan, sure. Um, Thank you. First of all, anytime there's a bond, it's based upon the poll voter checklist and the grand list. So any vote um, within the town has to be voted on by the entire town. It can't just be voted on by the sewer users. And I think I said at an earlier meeting, I have a distinct recollection of being told at the time that only the sewer users were paying, and I actually left my ballot blank because I didn't feel I should vote for something that I wasn't going to be paying for. And I think other people remember Frank at town meeting representing that it was sewer users only. And I've asked Rachel, she's going to try to find the video of that meeting for me. But I think the history, I've, I've also talked to Tom Devilvoice a few times, and I think the whole history of the sewer plant and what happened while he was a select board is actually, um, I think, educational. And I, I hope maybe Tom will I think chime that. in at this point and explain that. Tom, would you like to offer your good words? Tom Debevoise? Oh, I see. Are you muted, Tom? Is he muted? He's muted. There you go. He's good around here. Okay. So. Are our speakers are our speakers on? Yeah, our speakers. I can't wait to get here. Down specter to everyone. Oh. I wonder. Because now he's muted himself again. Tom, you've muted yourself again. There you are. Try talking with us now. Maybe up the volume. Yeah, could we up our volume? Or, or he may be used to. Yeah, I think he might have to. Yeah, he, yeah, he may have to. Uh, is it Tom? Is it Paul or is it uh, No, Tom Amber never avoids. It's, it's the purple with the white L. I'm sorry. Kareem has his hand up. Kareem? Yes, hi, can you hear me? Oh, we can yeah. hear you. Okay, I figured until Tom, you know, figures it out, maybe I could just jump in quickly. So first off, um, just want to thank those select board members and staff that have been doing some research. Uh, you know, our committee, unfortunately, did not have access to all that information, but I appreciate the fact that the uh, either the staff or the select board members have taken the time to uh, try to figure out sort of the background, the historical background. Um, I guess the, the point I would like to make, um, just echoing uh, Ray's point, is that regardless of what somebody heard, or what was videoed or was not videoed, we have to remember that we are a state of law. And when somebody is voting on an article, that article needs to hold all the information that needs to be imparted to the person voting for them to make. Um, a decision on the vote 
that is informed. It's unfortunate that in this case, there was nothing said about who actually would be paying for that. Okay? And unfortunately, we have to live with this. And as you said, Mary, it's the same wording as the EMS building, and the EMS building is funded by all the taxpayers. Okay? So I, I, I don't think we can just sort of shove this under the rug and say, well, we're referring to some historical you know, things that were approved in the past, or somebody heard something somewhere, or there was a conversation that was held. The fact is that we have to rely you know, legally on whatever is put in front of us when we vote. So that's my first comment. My second comment, to your point, Mary, you did say in the past for one specific um, item, I don't know what the amount was, the decision was 80-20, and then for another one in 1986, uh, it seemed here under Section 3 of that article you were talking about that all users uh, would be responsible or sewer users for paying this. The point I'm trying to make is this is not easy to decide, and there are reasons why things have shifted, things have changed, conversations have been held. We went from 80-20 to 100%, etc. We have to also remember that this was 36 years ago, and I don't know what the amount was, but we have to keep in mind that we're talking about, for starters, I don't know, two to four million dollars, depending how much we're going to get from the state to help us pay for the South Woodstock. And then there's the main plan that could go up to 18 million dollars. So in 36 years, things have to change tremendously. Okay, the demand put on such large plants um, have really increased from an environmental point of view because we're really scrutinized. So if we're going to put the historical context forward here, we should also remember that history evolves over time. And from an economic point of view, let's remember that we're talking about a huge amount of monies that might have to be divided by 900 taxpayers or 900 taxpaying entities, if you will, who are the sewer users. So before we rush and say, I just want to point to an ordinance that happened in 1986, I think we need to keep those things in mind and that the costs have increased, as you mentioned, and have tremendously increased, especially for those big plants. Kareem, you. If, you, if you heard me when I spoke a few minutes ago, yep. I did say that recognizing all of that increased cost, we may have to t talk further about this before we take out a bond and work on the main plant. I will also say that um, I've, become, I've become bonded with all these bond documents in the last few months. And the, the wording, and it's on, it's on every article, is all the same. It, I was amazed at that. Um, in the last few weeks, I've read closely every bond that has come before us, and there's been, um, been since around 89, there's been more than just sewer bonds, and they all have the same wording. It's the people of the town are committing, and in all cases but this, it has been all the taxpayers of the town who are pay, repaying the bond. Um, just a second, Susan. So, um, and in the last few months, when we have looked to bond, bond council who wrote the um, articles and the instructions for the bond we're talking about, and through the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, the question has been, what does your ordinance say? We could not locate the ordinance. I found the original one yesterday afternoon on yellow paper that was once pure white, I'm sure. Susan. Thank you. I, I, I think we're in agreement that we're taking history into perspective and the fact that things evolve over time. Thank you. Thank you. Susan Fuller. Okay. So, but we have, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, 
Unless we've got Tom back can, online, I'll take him. Can you hang on a second, Susie? Yes. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, shall I get closer so the master can hear? All right. So I just wanted to say, and I'll, I'll leave this with you, because I want to make this statement. Um, that number one, I've lived in and owned property both in the village of West Woodstock and South Woodstock, and I've been here since 1967. I remember the original SOAR build out that Woodstock created a user and non-user fee on our tax base. At that time, the sewer build out, uh, we had a septic field in our backyard in the village of West Woodstock. And we were still able to use that, but we were charged a user and non-user fee. Eventually, our antiquated system went and failed, and we hooked into the Woodstock one, which went by. Whether that non-user fee was because we had the pipe available, I don't know. However, we had to pay a hookup fee then, and a user's fee based on the metered amount of water that came in, because that mm -hmm. meant the amount of stuff that went Water out. in, water out. So in the early 80s, we sold that West Woodstock house and bought a farmhouse in South Woodstock. The septic system in place was old and needed improvement uh, just a few years later. Since then, we have had a new septic system designed and engineered, filed with the state, substantial cost, going up all the time. And we alone have paid these user fees. And those are going up for everyone in the town. So the, the septic in town may go up, but also the people building their septic systems out there are going up too. So if there's any doubt about whether I think that all private septic owners should pay equally for the upgrades to the town sewer, let me say this. Sure. When all the property owners, septic costs, designs, construction, maintenance are absorbed by the town, and the costs are figured out equally as a flat fee per user, and that's every little child and person who poops and sends it down through the system, and that would not be linked to any property tax or property value of tax. Since that's totally impractical on so many levels, let's continue with the users of the system paying for the system they use. In fairness, all residents users and non-users of the town should pay a flat fee as non-users users for the public and community buildings because we do all use those buildings. Those could be added into the town's part, you know, and you pick up that portion. Sewer users would then only be charged their portion and they would not be penalized for absorbing the cost of public building discharge. It's my understanding that a bond requires the whole town to vote on it in order for the holder of the bond to have a guarantee in case of a default. And that's why the whole town votes. However, I was told at the voting booth when I asked that the bond for the sewer would be paid by the users as it has been in the past. I was told that. If that's not the case, then it was incorrectly presented and maybe it should have to be brought back up at the next town meeting. That's my... Thank you, and thank you for giving this to me. But the, um, with what you have said, and I believe, Susan, I've heard it here tonight, the whole town votes because the whole town is responsible should default. it default. Yes. And so that is... That is what is um, upholding the vote being accurate. Um, and it was voted that way, as have all bonds been voted that I could find. It's the wording in every bond that the town has voted and um, that, that I could come up with. Nothing is worded differently. Thank you. Um, I have had 
many people who have spoken to me <laughs> in various <laughs> places and various times about this situation. And um, I would say it's very close. And people that understand the value of Woodstock having a well operating wastewater system, and you spoke of, you hinted to it in your presentation, and that is why with the cost, which we spoke about, I am confident the discussion will continue before the main plant takes on a, what we've heard could be up to an $18 million job. Um, a study is starting there very soon, and we will pay close attention. We have to keep this discussion going, but people also have to, re have to realize the town as a whole is responsible for the bond should it default. Thank you. Thank you for right. understanding. Susie Stoltz? Hi, thanks. Um, Mary, whatever you guys decide, I'm going to support um, and just be done with it. But I will say that whatever you decide needs to be equally, it needs to be applied equally. So when you have, if you have a bond for the town hall, there's a lot of people who don't use town hall, will never go to town hall. They should not be expected to pay for the renovation of the theater if we go forward with that. Um, you're talking about a parks department, there's, you know, and hiring somebody and that those costs, there are lots and lots of people who don't use the park department, don't use the parks, won't go to the parks. Um, so they shouldn't be expected to pay for that as well. Whatever you decide, I'm going to, you know, get behind and just, you know, accept and be done with. But you really need to apply whatever you decide equally to all things going forward. Um, thank you, Susie, for that comment. I'm going to ask you a question. Are you um, implying then that we should put up a, a admission gate at the parks and collect from people as they go there, just no to be sure everybody that goes there pays? And those no more than you should uh, uh, charge, you know, fees for people using a public bathroom, like. 25 cents. No, I don't think that you should be having installing, you know, gates so that people can use a bathroom or charging restaurants, uh, restaurant customers sewer fees to throw their excess water down into the sewer system. Um, no, that's too complicated. I think that uh, you should just have people should pay for what if you're going down that, you know, uh, only users pay, then that should be the town policy and, and only users pay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, town meeting. I see this. Is this your question? Wasn't town meeting recorded? Yes, yes that, was my, that was my question. Yes, and it I, is. And we're looking for the archival recording. Because I, I, was at, I was at town meeting, and I don't remember Frank saying that at all. Thank you. Um, we are looking for that archival recording. We'll keep you posted. Mary? Yes. Can I Roger? say something? This yes. is Roger. Yes, I saw your hand up. Thank okay, you. Good. Thanks for being Great. patient. So we can argue all day about the philosophy of how public goods should be paid for by a public entity, by the citizens of that public entity. But it seems to me, the, the, and, and I have my opinion on that, and other people have their opinions on that. Um, you know, as I've said before, I don't have kids in school. I'm very happy to pay for the school because I think it's a public good. A sewer and wastewater treatment is a public good. But the most important and most relevant factor here from my perspective is we voted on a ballot question that did not say that this was going to be parsed out only to sewer users. We didn't vote on that ballot question, so that ballot question should no longer be operant. Um, People, if, if we're changing the rules after the vote was done, then 
we need to have another vote and let people decide based on the full information that's available to us now. I appreciate all the work you've done on the history of this, but we didn't have that history when we voted on it. Right. So we should, we should decide that this ballot question cannot be implemented as it was voted. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Um, Roger, it was voted as every ballot question is written and voted. And the town of Woodstock is responsible should repayment of the bond go into default. Every voter in Woodstock, every voter, property owner, Woodstock will pay. Okay, I understand that, but the ballot question did not say only sewer users will pay for this. And I would suggest that if we're starting down this road, the chance that you're going to get a, a, a bond for the main sewer plant is very slim. So, so if that's the road we're going down, then we need to really think about what the consequences are. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mary, may I? Yes, I Susan. I just wanted to clarify one, one thing. Could you come uh, up closer to the certainly. microphone? Would you mind? No. Thank you. So the idea of public good and the fact that if you don't use town hall, you shouldn't have to pay for it, that's fine, but you don't have to maintain your own town hall. I don't have the, I don't have the luxury of being on town sewer. I have to pay for my own septic system, and, this, and the septic system is going to last about 30 years, and it's going to cost me probably, in today's dollars, $30,000 to replace it. You don't have that burden with town hall, schools, or anything else. If you choose to use it, don't not use it, you don't have to pay anything. I don't get to use the town sewer, and yet I bear an incredible cost to have my own septic system. Thanks. Thank you, Susan. Um, I don't know if we have Tom yet or not. I'm, Tom, are you with us yet? Tom, do you have a voice? Apparently not. I'm sorry. Tom's trying, but... We were, we we were looking, I was looking forward to hearing from Tom because he guided me to find what I found. Wendy has a question. Who? Wendy has Wendy. a question. Oh, Wendy. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mary. No, I just put my hand up. Um, Thanks. Fo following up on the, um, the, the situation where certain properties find themselves needing to have septic versus so hooking up to the town sewer, it's, it's always been my understanding um, that those that live within the village who are clearly have access to the sewer system pay an additional tax. I mean, it, it, taxpayers carry a higher burden in the village of Woodstock as it is. So I I, I hear the expense of a property owner with a septic field, but I, but I just want to, you know, I don't think we should get into tit for tats. I think that decisions that are made in terms of where your investment goes in your property uh, add up differently because of different factors. But that shouldn't come into play when it comes to a town-wide vote, in my opinion. Thank you. And mm -hmm. I'm going to end this discussion now that has gone way over 15 minutes. And um, that, is, um, that is the end of the discussion about the sewer ordinance and the responsibility of payment. Now, I have um, also, I don't see on the agenda an item that is to set oh yes set the sewer tax rate it's down under the board of sewer commissioners so we'll wait until then i do see that um michael caduto has returned to the meeting and i told him we'd hear from him in about 30 minutes at 6 10. so i would like to extend the courtesy of the select board is good with that to have Michael Caduto read his letter 
from Sustainable was to talk about EEI and... I read his book, it's like he can read it for us. He wanted to read it into the minutes. Michael? Hi, Mary. Can Hi. you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I want to thank all the select board members for taking the time and thought to the URI put into the considering the EEI energy saving and efficiency proposal. Um, and ideally, the funds for the EEI projects could be placed in a budget. Um, if that's not forthcoming, then, you know, in lieu of that, uh, we'd like to sustain Woodstock, we'd like to submit this letter. Uh, dear select board, Woodstock has eight budget cycles to meet the net zero by 2034 set out in the Climate Emergency Declaration, which the select board passed in 2020. This means that starting now, the town will need to reduce its emissions by 12.5% each year. On average, the Woodstock Climate Action Projects with EEI would reduce the town's emissions by close to 12%, keeping the town on track to meet its climate commitments. Failing to take action this year simply means that the town will need to double its effort the following year. The longer we wait to address our climate action goals, the more it will cost the citizens of Woodstock to do so over time. Uh, we recognize that there are competing priorities in every municipal budget and respect the select board's decision as to whether to fund these projects. However, in order to give the town the option to make progress towards the net zero by 2030 goal, and to save taxpayer dollars in the long term, we ask that the select board consider putting the projects on the ballot. The voters should have the opportunity to prioritize the commitment to reducing the town's climate pollution. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you, Michael. Now you've read the letter into the record. Um, you see that later in our um, agenda we're going to talk about other petitions and other requirements to add to the um, warning for town meeting and we will take this up further at that point you're welcome to stay and listen and if you want to leave the meeting and come back again I'd say we're going to be about another 15 or 20 minutes before we get to that okay thank okay you. thank you you're welcome okay select board we are um, at the point here where we have to decide on a cover for the town report. We built nothing spectacular this year. We've not rehabbed a bridge. We, um, we <laughs> had our hands tied in a lot of areas due to COVID. Um, have we put the Lincoln Covered Bridge on the town report since it was rehabbed from the couple of years ago thing. No? I don't believe so. So, and it's rehabbed again. It's been repaired Rehab again. And, rehabbing. and it's <laughs> open. <laughs> it's open. And that would be my suggestion. That's the one suggestion I have had. And one thought I have had is to put the Lincoln Covered Bridge because it has suffered too. <laughs> two bad injuries since 2017 and I just that is my thought um, we when the Tassville covered bridge was finally rehabbed we had a lovely picture of that and the gathering that was in Tassville the day the bridge was um, had a grand reopening that's my suggestion I don't know how anyone else feels if it can think of a better the sewer plant? The sewer plant. <laughs> 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 and the scratch and stuff. Yeah. There you go. I'm done. <laughs> I have nothing else I, to say. I think that sounds great, Mary. I'm all okay. for it. Okay. The how, about the, how about the Lincoln Covered Bridge on the town report? Sure, why not? Why not? That's fine. I like it. Thank you. Good. Thanks, Carrie, for moving that forward. Huh. There you have it, uh, Nikki. <laughs> Such as we are, we've made a choice. Okay, an appointment for the Planning Commission. We have two, we have interviewed two people who are waiting to either be appointed or hear that they are not going to be. And that is Nicholas Selden and Frank Hornick. Correct. And there are two openings are that two we openings. have to fill. Right. Uh, typical 
terms of service on the planning commission and commissions are four years or three years as the economic development commission this is the planning commission we have interviewed two people there are two openings do you have a yes right i have a question sure when we interviewed every, uh these gentlemen a couple weeks a couple months ago uh -huh. was there one or two openings at that time um I do I not was, know. I thought there was just one. But I do know that yes. the, when, we, when we appoint to the planning commission, the trustees and the select board each interview right. no, and I, then try to ratify the selections. Right. No, I, so I, I that. think that maybe the first one was. I didn't know that there were two. Okay, so at if the there time. was one, shouldn't we advertise? for the second opening if it happened after the interviews? I think that we had we had an ad we had an ongoing ad until we had more than one person to interview. For the first for the first anyway. Week. And sometimes we have ads that run six or eight weeks as these things occur. Oh I'm just that I I've not been told by Neil that I have you, do you yeah. have any other information that I, I don't, don't have? I don't, and I don't know if those, when those two openings definitely occurred. I just know there are two openings now. Yes, I don't know when they occurred either. I, I, I do recall when you interviewed the first person, you knew a second opening was coming. I was at that meeting. Thank you. Hmm. Yep. Okay. What do we advertise for the second opening is my question. I think that... I believe that's how we got the second person to interview. No, the second person interviewed for the first opening. Mm -hmm. Have we had any? We posting? had Frank Harnack first, and right. he was yeah. in late December or January, maybe late December. Right. And, and okay. Nick, oh, he interviewed for the planning commission yeah, the about board. the same time he interviewed for the other committee that he is now appointed right. to. Yeah, the yes. Agency, yeah. Frank Hornick we spoke with twice because he was looking for two different spots. And he has one of them. Okay. I just want to make sure that we covered all our bases. And that we don't, we're not we, we, we don't appoint somebody to the planning commission that hasn't, we have an advertised position for. That's all I'm looking at. Okay. I am not aware that we I think we had a running ad for I planning commission too. since about yeah. August. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, th I think we did too. I won't, couldn't guarantee that, but I think there were. Yes. So then do we need a motion? I would move to appoint. To appoint. Go right. ahead, Carrie. I would move to appoint our two applicants to the two positions. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Okay. In the order that they were interviewed, um, Frank Hornick being the first one would get the first open would get the first vacancy, and Nicholas Selden would be appointed to the second vacancy. He was the second. He was already appointed to one. He was already appointed to one. But he was appointed by, by the us. select board. But it has the, to be. Then the trustees would do that. They thing. have to be rat, right. They have to ratify it. Yep. Sorry, Carrie. I said that sounds fine. Okay. Is, is there, yeah. Ray has seconded the motion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And we have to take this to the um, so the trustees, or did they do anything about wanting an appointment last week when they interviewed? I don't. I don't think they did. I'll have to okay. Look, we'll have to look. Yeah. We'll All right. Have to look. Thank you. Mary, Mary, they did appoint uh, Frank, but they're waiting to interview Nico. Oh, that's right. Nico was not available last week. Yes. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for Thank the you. reminder. All right. So um, Frank Hornick will get the first. And we'll put this on the back burner, but not on the simmer. We'll keep it on medium until the <laughs> trustees have an, op an opportunity to act on this. All right, thank you. 
We're moving to new business now. And the first item is a budget discussion. We have not finished our budget planning yet. Um, we have a meeting next Tuesday. And what would you like to discuss this evening? Or do you want to? Let's wait till next Tuesday. Okay. Any questions tonight for anybody? Oh, I think no. Nope. Wait okay. until we get to the no. meeting. Right. And I'll just add, Mary, that I have, I have talked, I've sent a, um, an email to department heads to look at their budgets and find some additional savings. So, and I'm going to look at I'm going to look at those other items that don't fall in the specific departments to look for some savings there as well. All right. So now we need to find that for for um, current. I know because of potential salary increases due to the union negotiations. So, thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Just wanted to add that where we are. All right. Um, we're going to talk about petitions now, and these are the petitions that required signatures to be presented to us to go on to the um, warning for special articles. Most are for nonprofit organizations right in this area that serve people of Woodstock. Um, there was, uh, this was brought to us as it is every summer. Um, to, re to question whether or not we would require a requisite amount of 5% of the voters of the town to consider petitions for special articles, appropriations from the people of Woodstock for town meeting. Last year, when we were in the throes of COVID, we agreed not to take petitions. Um, to require the signatures. When we did this in August, we were out of the emergency situation. Um, the pandemic seemed to be lightening, lightening up and it being less of a nuisance. However, um, we all know what's happened and there are not as many social events. People are not gathering as we thought they would be because in August things had lightened up. We were starting to gather outside. Sporting events were recurring. At this time, when the petitions needed to be turned in, there are not sporting events with spectators at the school or anywhere that people are attending. The theater is having fewer events, therefore less participants and less visitors to the theater. We have had requests and cover letters from most of those um, organizations that typically submit the re requisite number of signatures to place a petition on the ballot. I'm pleased to tell you that um, no one has asked for an increase, which we asked last year, and we're asking again this year for no one to ask for an increase in their request for funds. So at this time, um, and we have the authority to, to put anything on the warning that we feel is important and necessary. So at this time, we have to agree if we will um, admit the petitions on the warning that have been presented without the requisite 150 signatures. Some are 80, some are 75, one was 145. Um, Did everyone get some signatures? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. okay. Yes, everyone. Everyone went out, everyone has secured a number of pages. Okay. And what, what I'm seeing, you know, usually you get a petition turned in with eight or ten pages and they're pretty full. These are coming in with eight or ten pages, so the number of volunteers are the same, but there aren't the number of signatures. And I will add, um, only for your benefit, select board, 
that um, with the pharmacy not being there, you know, they put all the petitions right on a side counter and they would collect an awful lot of petitions there. When, are the, when are the petitions due? They were due last Thursday. Okay. Okay. They were due last Thursday. Petitions for office are due next Monday, but the other was last Thursday. Okay. So, what's your pleasure? I say we accept anyone who has some signed petitions. Okay. Ray has made a motion to accept the petitions of any organization who has made an attempt and has submitted um, some number of signatures. Second. Joe seconded that motion. I'll call for a vote. All those in favor of accepting petitions for organizations who did not meet the 150 requisite but did submit petitions, uh, signatures on their petitions for the warning of town meeting. Okay. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Any opposed? Everyone's in favor? Thank you. Um, I did have a uh, Deanna Jones from the um, Senior Center repeated her request to have everything put in the budget and I said to her with our budget being not accepted yet that um, we would probably not approve that this year I would confirm it tonight, but we would recommend to her that she bring it to us again, and maybe submit something to us in writing ahead of budget time next year. Yes. Okay. Is that agreeable? Yep. Thank you. Carrie? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Jill, are you still with us? <laughs> We are at the um, Investment Advisory Committee report. I believe Jill Davies is oh, going to please. I am here. Hold on. I just need to call. Thank I, you. Uh, I haven't called it up yet. Can I have a, can you do oh, the next item okay. and I'll go sure, come back to this? We sure can. Thank you. Um, oh, oh town mandate. mask mandate. You, as you know, the village has, um, adopted a requirement for mask wearing in all village buildings. Um, I was at their meeting. They asked that we consider it tonight and um, it's on the agenda and here we are all masked. <laughs> There's not one person in this room without one. What do you think? I mean, every place I've been to that's not been in a village has requirements you wear a mask, so. Well, the farmer's market's about the only place I go outside well, of the I've been, you know, South village. Yeah, you know, they so, are. So, I mean, the go trouble on. is getting people to abide by it. Okay. Whether, uh, it's, whether it's a store requirement or our requirement. Yes, Joe? Yeah. There are several other places. The Athletic Club is outside the village. The South Woodstock Store is outside the village. Um, store there are several park. stores um, coming into the village on Route 4. So there are many people who are not covered by the village ordinance. It's not an ordinance. It's a requirement. Okay. And they have signs. I think that village, I think that one of the village trustees has delivered signs to all businesses. And even I've seen a couple of those signs in uh, on windows outside of the village as well. Yeah, I would hope so. So Ray, are you thinking that it's not necessary? I, I, I say, you know, if we're going to do it, it can't be a mandate because you can't enforce it. That's right. And a requirement, um, you can say it, but. What's, what's what's going to stop somebody from not going? Not wearing a mask. I, I think I think that at, at this point it's it's about expressing sentiment. And since the village has voted to have the requirement, I think it's you know optically it looks good if we're in accord with the village 
Um, I don't know, you know, I don't think the issue here is like, how are we going to enforce it? Like, obviously we're not going to, but I do think that it, that it presents, presents well if, if we're all saying the same thing. I agree with Carrie. Okay. Well, well, I do too. I'm just saying it's, 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 you know, I, 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 I know that um, CTIN has given permission for us to use the same sign and put town instead of village. Okay. And they'd have so to be delivered to you. those businesses on the on the ends of from the village to the town lot limits. Sure. So I'll make that motion. Okay. But I, I think we um, make it to coincide with what the village decides to do at their next meeting. Okay. So that's they, right. If they if they rescind it. Um, I think ours gets rescinded with their rescind, when they rescind theirs. If okay. They, if they continue then, it, then we'll continue it. So do we want to revisit the February 15th or just automatic cutoff? I say if, if they say... If they, re, if they, if they rescind the requirement, rescind their requirement, I think we rescind then it ours at the is same time. retroactively rescinded with theirs. With their, believe, con concurrent with theirs. Right, I believe that's what you did last time. Yes. I think it followed... The, the villages. Yes. Right. They were first, the then, and we right. went along with it. Now, right. February 8th is their next right. meeting, and that's when the current requirement expires. Correct. Correct. So we'll revisit this right. on February 8th. Right. Ray's made a motion, Joe seconded it, um, to mirror the village mask requirement, which is in place until February 8th, and to um, have signs made and distributed to those businesses who would fall under the requirement. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I don't know how they're going to enforce it. Well, that's, that is difficult, John. I mean, Best we can do. And there's no. Throw you in jail if you don't I don't think so. <laughs> Why don't you try it? <laughs> no, I don't want to. I don't want to go to jail. But. You think they're coming over? I doubt it. No. Are you opposed or in favor? No, I guess I, I guess I'll, I'll go in favor. Of it. All right. <laughs> well, that passed unanimously. Thank you. All right. We'll get on the signs tomorrow. Thanks, Bill. All righty. Jill. Okay. So I have the, the report. Do you have it? Yes, we have it in our packet. And can you put it on the screen for everybody oh, else, or shall I do that? I, please, if you would. I don't have it in my computer. Okay, so this report is from the Investment um, Committee, who is an advisory committee to the Select Board and the Trustees. And we um, are charged with looking after the money or at least giving you advice on the money that is uh, in the Rockefeller Endowment Fund. That fund today is worth um, two million, nearly two million three hundred thousand dollars. It's in three different places. There's some with the Vermont Community Loan Fund, just just over hundred thousand there, and then the rest is divided between two Vanguard mutual funds. We chose that because it's a very low cost way of investment and the funds um, manage to follow the market. So we do as well or as poorly as the market. And we do this report for you each quarter to show that these funds are still, to, to, to look ourselves and then to show you that these funds are a good place to have the money and make sure that they're performing as well as the marketplace. So the first graph is the equities. 60% of the money is invested in the equity fund and that is, has done um, as well as the S&P 500 and actually outperformed it for two of the past four months. And then 40% is in bonds and those bonds have outperformed the Bloomberg index, which is an index of bonds for two of the past four months. So in total, the funds have gone up 2.9% since August 31st, 2021. And we think that the funds are invested in good places and they're demonstrating stable growth, so we don't recommend any changes. Thank you. Um, that's certainly one of the more positive things we've heard in the last few 
few weeks in many areas, health and safety and in the financial world. Um, see any, have any comments or other questions for Jill? Just keep making I, money. I see none. Thank you, Jill. This is um, certainly one of the most positive things we've had as, as the year closed and the new one opened. Right. I, I wanted to, I'm going to step down from the committee when the market changes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure we'll be accepting yeah, any yeah. <laughs> recent yeah. resignations at that time. But you can try us. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Where's my agenda? Here it is. All right. Um, we have to schedule a special meeting to sign the warning for town meeting. It has to be posted publicly by Sunday, January 30. We're having a budget meeting on Tuesday, I believe it's Tuesday, Tuesday, yes. Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday, yeah. Yes. So um, any changes we make to the budget on Tuesday um, will be incorporated into the warning that we will then sign for town meeting. I hope we are able to um, adopt a budget at our meeting on Tuesday. I would um, Can, ask, when would you like to? Well, I'm just going to ask, is there, um, has the state come out with any um, uh, oh. decision about moving town meeting? Yes, this is the option. And that's what I one thing I want we need to secure tonight um, these are the town meeting options um, there'll be no town formal town meeting on the regular day or for us the Saturday previous we have the option of doing what we did last year with the informational meeting last year we had two um, it's been recommended that we only have one because of the numbers of the meeting last year. And the town clerk has recommended we have that on the Saturday that we would normally have our regular town meeting. The reason being, last year we had it a week earlier, this year that weekend, um, in late February, the weekend before our regular town meeting day is President's Day weekend. That is a weekend a lot of people go places and disappear. For some people, that is the beginning of a winter vacation away. So um, the other option that we have to consider is moving it into spring when we might be able to have a meeting outdoors such as at the school, in the bleachers, or at a park where everyone would bring their own seating. And if we wait until May to have a town meeting, which is the earliest we're going to be able to do anything outdoors, we risk the possibility of not having a budget in place on July 1st. If it gets defeated at that point, we have to get, if we had schedule it for May, we would have 45 days to um, reschedule the meeting in order to try to pass a revised budget. We stand a better chance of that if we stick to the March 1st date for the town meeting vote and consider again as we did last year, Australian ballot voting. I think that's what we should do. You think that's what we should do? Yeah, have the regular March, the regular date, March. March 1st, March 1st. Australian yeah. ballot voting. Yeah. Okay. Um, we put it off till May, be... then it's going to be a lot of upset, discussion, and everything else. It's better off to have it the way it usually is, I believe. Is it Finally. Saturday, February 26th? Yeah. Okay. February 26th would be the typical day we would have town meeting in the theater. 
Um, as last year, we have been discouraged from having any kind of a meeting like that. And um, the recommendation is to have informational meetings, which um, would consist of review of all the items that are going to be voted on March 1 and hold Australian ballot voting on March 1st. Okay. And um, at the end of this directive, it states that this is only good for this year's town meeting as it was last year. And as late as November, we begin getting the training and the information for regular town meeting this year. And two weeks ago, that all changed. So, just out of curiosity, I have, I'm fine with this. But just out of curiosity, if the state says we can have public meetings February 26th, because nobody knows. There's one thing that's not signed yet, yes. Okay. If it's said, well, Charlie, just yesterday when we were talking about this, he said, if there ever was a miracle, I wish it would be now so we could have town meeting as we should. Well, I'm just saying, if, if, if the state okays that, if, if it's they safe should, to go public, we can go public if we want. To, if right? they should, we can we can schedule a special meeting and rescind anything we decide tonight. Okay. All right. I'll make that motion. You'll make a motion to um, take hold. the advice of the state. Yes. Um, hold, hold town meeting. February informational 26th. meetings. On One informational meeting on February twenty-sixth. Um, and vote. Voting by Australian ballot March 1? Yes, but let me just ask a question. How, hey. if we're going to do this, how many, I, what's the capability of Zoom? First, well, last year we had, how many do we have? 65 we months. We 65. We, I think we can go, I think we can go up to 100. Correct me if I'm wrong, Nikki, but I think we can go up to 100. Um, um, can, can I add to this? Of course. You can go much higher than 100. Uh, you just mm. have to buy a special, right. um, you have to That's pay for a special fee for that event. Thank you. That's good enough. Thank you. Okay. And yeah. Bill's saying that's good then enough. I'll go with one meeting, otherwise I was going to say One two. meeting. Okay. If, are you but, really comfortable with that? I wonder. But I, I just want to make sure that maybe we should look into the getting sure. that extra uh, upgrade. Yeah. I will also add that last week, one of the planning and zoning meetings um, was held in the theater, and it all worked. I was down there for part of it, yeah. and it seemed to go quite well. Yeah, no, so, yeah, so yeah, yeah, but if we, yeah. if we can get something over 100 people on Zoom, I think that's, then I'll go with one meeting. If we can't, I think we need to do two. Are you with us with all of that, Nikki? Yes, and we can also do, like, pay for the bigger upgrade for like a month. We don't have to like keep us because we oh. do pay. Uh, like, yeah. So that right. is an option. We can upgrade it for okay. a month and then yeah. go February, back. February, All right. February so Ray 26. has made a motion to. Mary, I'm sorry. Can I weigh in? Of course. This is Roger. Yeah, I didn't see you. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, so I, I, I would strongly recommend that you have one meeting because I think then it is as much as possible like the actual town meeting. Everybody who wants to weigh in is is there at the same time rather than having to go to two meetings or not hearing what happened at the other meeting. Well, I think that's what Ray's motion is. Yes. To have one informational meeting on Saturday, February 26th, followed by Australian ballot voting only. And that will be on town meeting day, March 1, 2022. Okay. So that's the motion that's been made by Ray and seconded by John Doton. And all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And um, I'd also just uh, raise condition is built in that if the state decides at any point in February we can go to the regular town meeting, we will quickly schedule a meeting to possibly rescind the motions and votes we've taken this evening. Thank you. Okay. Let's go back over here.
All right, so we have to schedule the meeting to sign the warning. We were doing that when we mm -hmm. went into the other discussion. So I'd like to return to that. Yeah. When are we going to sign the warning? You said what? by January 31st? January 30th is a 30th. Sunday. I don't think we'll be coming in on Sunday morning to sign the warning. Sign electronically. No. Um, well, what's Friday? Friday is the 29th? 28th. 28th, okay. So we could do it on Thursday the 27th or Friday the 28th. Either works for me. Yeah. And me? Want to sign the warning on a Thursday or a Friday? Come into town hall. We'll have a special meeting. We're going to have a budget meeting on Tuesday mm -hmm. when hopefully we will finalize and accept the budget. What time is the budget meeting, Mary? Noon on Tuesday. Noon on Tuesday. And the meeting, which, should we have it earlier, Carrie? Would that be more? No, 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 that's fine. Okay. Um, and what time are we going to meet to sign the warning? Is it, uh, has, it has to be an open meeting? It has to be an, a warned meeting. A warned meeting? It has to be one, you know, we have to yeah. be open here and have, we will have the Zoom available. When's the last date we have to sign the warning? J J uh, January 30th on Sunday. January 30th. Yeah, on Sunday. Okay. So what? So what they, I, I don't care, either Thursday or Friday, and I just say let's do it first thing in the morning, like 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock, okay. 9 o'clock, Friday. Friday? Yeah. Sounds good. Is either, day, is either day better for you, Carrie, the Thursday or Friday? Either one is fine. Okay. So Friday is the 28th, Joe? Uh, yes. Yep. January 28th, 9 a.m., we'll meet to sign the warning. That'll be a special select board meeting. Any questions? Thank you. Okay, Board of Sewer Commissioners. Oh, Mary, did you skip number five? Did I skip number five? The one percent. Oh, yes. I'm so sorry. We have to determine the language for our article for the vote on the 1% option tax to be put on the warning for town meeting for a town-wide vote. We voted at our last meeting that we would do this. That we would put it on the ballot. Right. Yep. So I talked to the Department of Taxes and because the village is part of the town, um, there was nothing in their rules that would prevent the town from having a town-wide inclusive of the village sales and use tax. It would just come down to local politics and local decisions from, from the discussion that I had. Thank you for following up on that, Joe. And my opinion is it's good, this is my opinion, is that it's good to be uniform um, town-wide. Town-wide. But that's the information I have and Okay, so, and we have agreed to put it on our ballot. The village has not agreed yet to put it on theirs. So and did we agree um, uh, that we would stipulate that the money would go into which fund? Capital budget. Well, that's, into, that's, what, that's what part of this talking about wording tonight, discussion, right? yes. Yes, the wording uh -huh. discussion. Um, okay, so this is just because I've seen so many of these articles. Um, shall the town of Woodstock vote to impose or levy a 1% local option sales and use tax for the purpose of or to be, to be added to um, capital budget funds. See, we have to figure that all out. The question I have, and this may mean another call to the tax department, 
the local options tax we have for right now, where the money goes to the, eventually the Economic Development Commission, is option. You go out for dinner and it's charged on alcohol and rooms. So that's your, the option is that you order the drink that's going to be taxed. But if this is a sales tax, it's something like if I go to Ace and buy um, a hammer, I'm going to pay sales tax. You're going to pay the one percent with an yeah, option. Yeah. Right. 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 So, so the, the, the state, wording the that should, and the, we should be able to get that wording from. The yeah, state. and I was talking. See, this just. Yeah, we'll put it on our put it on the ballot. But tonight, when I was talking to Bill, I said, "Where's the option? You know, is that just a sales tax?" Or is it, what's the option part of option. that? I don't think you have an option. It's a sales okay. tax. You, right. It's, it's yeah. not like I don't want to pay my 1% <laughs> when I get my drink. Okay. The yeah, option is buying exactly the hammer right. or not. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Mary, okay. Mary if, if I may suggest, um, there are a couple of towns, uh, you'll see it in my presentation, that have recently adopted that. And we can maybe reach out to them and just look at the wording that they put forward and maybe that could inspire you guys. I don't know. I mean, are you suggesting that the word options is it's an optional? I mean, because I thought that options meant it's optional that the town can levy this. Yeah, I think that's yeah. yeah. That's how I, I would not, think. So yeah. it's not like it's an option you can buy this or not. Not can yeah, buy this, but the option is that you choose to buy it, so you pay the tax. Right. So, um, Kareem, yes, I will. Um, it seems that when you see something worded and placed on a ballot, the inspiration just falls on you to repeat exactly what they did. So we have time. We do. Yeah, because we're not going to sign the. We have to get it to Nikki in time for her to include it on the, the warning. warning for us for so, Friday. So we don't have to decide, right? We don't have to. Perhaps we can add this to our agenda. The day we do the, we finalize the budget, yeah. so that Nikki has it in time for what she needs. W Wendy has a question. Wendy Marinan has a question. Oh, Wendy. Mm -hmm. Mary, thank you, Mary. Thank you, Carrie. I just a clarification. Um, <clears throat> my understanding of the current rooms and meals tax is it's on any food, prepared food or uh, served beverage or lodging, mm -hmm. not just alcohol. No, no, yeah. Yeah, I just said alcohol, but no. Rooms, oh, okay, I, I, didn't, rooms, I didn't want us to be on no. the wrong impression. Rooms, okay. meals, and alcohol. So a Sam, like a, a served meal, Take out. The, whole, the whole tab gets 1% added. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, thank you. So Kareem. I, yeah, if I may, I know um, there was a quick discussion around, you know, what the village has decided to do or not. I, I, I tend to agree with Joe. I think this needs to be resolved and clarified before you finalize this, because it's going to cause confusion if the village uh, advertises that they're not putting it. I'm not sure how people are going to interpret that. Are they going to interpret that? The local option tax applies only to sales tax that's outside of the village or not. It, there is a risk that gets conf confusing. Meals and room tax was put forward by the town and it got adopted by the village. Okay? Uh, I believe there's an article, um, Barry Milston had circulated it, that shows that actually the village can impose more taxation than the town yeah, if it wants yeah. to, but cannot reduce whatever the town wants to impose right. on the town, which includes the village. Right. I believe you're but, right. Yeah, but I, I think we need to have some clarity. The, In other words, the village can say that they don't like the idea, but the village cannot say they're not going to put it on their ballot, which means that it will not be effective in the stores that are in the village. So, so we have to be careful. 
Jill wants to say something, and yeah. then I'll tell you yeah. what I remember from the Kareem, trustees. the point is, and listening to Joe's confirmation, the point is that if it's on the town ballot and everybody votes for it, it doesn't matter what the village does. So you don't need to wait for a decision by the village because the town is the only person that needs to make a decision. Right. Uh, I, I, I guess I'm aligned with you, Jill. I just want to make sure that this is clear even to the trustees. That's all. Thank you. Well, the trustees, um, I was at their meeting when they agreed at that point not that they were not interested in doing that. I thought they were going to hold the... Uh, they have another meeting on yeah. February 8th. Yeah, and they just wanted to decide where the money was yeah, going what, before they voted on it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Kareem. Um, do you know offhand the towns that you were talking about? Or shall I just look in your report? No, actually, I looked it up. It, it's Winooski and Brattleboro that approved their local sales and use tax in 2019. That's the most recent I can find. Winooski and Brattleboro. Thank you. Hmm? All right. Who's going to so, uh, collect this and control all this? Where does, where does the control come? You send it, your sales tax, you send it all to the state of Vermont, and yep. they send you back a percentage of it after they keep Just their like part. Just like the other one. Yep. They keep their part, we get the rest. Oh, I see. Thank you. That's never 100% when you're dealing with the State Department of Taxes. <laughs> Are there any other questions related to this? Roger, did you have your hand up? I guess not. You muted, Roger. I, no, I didn't realize I'd raised my hand, I'm sorry. But I do have one comment now that I'm here. Please. And I, I thank the board for working on this, and especially Joe for going to the the taxation department and looking into this because I think it's wonderful that we're looking for any way to increase our revenues. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. See, that's how we try to get things done. Everybody does a little <laughs> part of something. We all have our assignments. All right. Um, Board of Sewer Commissioners, <coughs> this is to set the sewer tax rate for South Woodstock, we have all the information in our packets. The calculations have been done. And um, you have the comparison from 2021 to 2022 for each. one person, two person, a family, or a metered, or the metered rate, which is um, how some are calculated. And so we are going the to do cal metered. Pardon we me? We are going to do metered. Of course. OK. Um, this is, this year, it is being billed as an annual tax again. Um, they are quite confident that the quarterly is going to start in the summer. Mm -hmm. So by midsummer, you should be getting a quarterly sewer tax bill. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the rate, shall I read them for each category? Single person rate will be six fifty six ninety two. Last year it was five ninety six thirty seven. So that's an increase of about just about sixty dollars. The two person nine eighty five thirty eight up from eight ninety four fifty six which is about $90 increase. 
and the family <coughs> rate will be 13.13.84. Last year was just under 1200 at 1192.74. The difference there is 121.10 for the family rate. The metered reading for this year is 0.1314 for per cubic foot, and the last year was 0.1193. <coughs> Mary, I have a question. You're, you're reading the page that says with bond. Does that mean that it assumes that the bond that we've discussed at length earlier is included in those numbers? Correct. The bond that but, we have discussed from earlier this year. Right. But we haven't come to a decision yet on that, right? So this is still to be decided. We're about to talk of, we're about to bring that to a vote, I believe. Okay. <clears throat> but we can't accept this until we make a decision on the bond. And if we don't make a decision on the bond to go with what the ordinance clearly states, then we cannot approve this either. So, where do we want to go? So step one is the step one is, is the bond. Um, whether we're going to accept the um, article of the bond as stated. And then we either we then we can approve this. The sewer billing, they've been working on it for a few weeks, and they continue to um, concurrently work on the process of converting to the quarterly situation where they will have quarterly mm -hmm. readings and they'll start billing that in the summer. So, does anybody need to hear the, the ordinance statement again? Or are you comfortable with it? I'm, I'm comfortable with it. Um, is the select board and I know we're divided on this. Do you have any um, apprehension about moving according to the ordinance? Moving forward according to the ordinance? I do not. Do you have any question about moving forward according to the ordinance? I guess not with a bond. Are you talking about with a bond? Yes, yeah. yes. Carrie? Um, I guess not. This is one of the most difficult things we've dealt with this year. Well, I survived Falkner Park, so I'll probably <laughs> survive this too. <laughs> Survival is one thing, recovery is another. <laughs> I know you have questions, I'm, I'm, Ray. I, 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 know I can't you will, support it, so. You can't support it. No. You can't support the ordinance I, as I, it reads. No, not, not when a ballot question was written the way it was written. I understand that. I understand what you're saying. Um, and I, uh, and I also know from where you're coming. Um, I, I, I mean, I also just hate how much confusion there is around it. I hate for people to feel 
I'm, all, I'm sorry, I have a very, I have a terrible headache, so I'm not my most eloquent, but um, <laughs> none of this feels very good. No, it doesn't. It doesn't feel one bit good. Look, look if I may, um, you guys are going to take a vote, right? And this is still a manageable amount. We're talking about three, four million dollars. It's going to be divided by 900 people. My recommendation, if you do pass it the way it is today, and some people might vote against it, is that for the next one, which might be $18 Kareem, million, dollars, Kareem, might, there should be clarity on the ballot. Kareem, That's all. Yeah. of course, we've okay. learned that lesson. And okay. at this time, um, you won't, I know you know you don't have a vote in this. No, I know, I, and, I, I don't. And we are really struggling with it, so I yep. ask your patience with us. Thank you. So you need a motion um, at this point? Yes. Is there a motion to accept Article 9, Section 3 well, you gotta accept the whole, of the Woods? Excuse me, Mary, but I think you have to accept the whole ordinance. You can't just... Well, that was, that's been accepted and revised and... Um, added to in 2011. Okay. So good. this is the ordinance that was um, accepted originally in 1986. Right. Revised in 2006. You see there's a signature page in there from 2006. It's got, um, oh, that's in the smaller Hang on, I've got it, I've got it all. I have it. And now that's petitions. One is about 12 pages, one is two or three pages. Do you have the smaller packet there, Bill? No, I do not. Okay. Yeah, this is so you're just making a motion to enforce the regulation? Yes, but. Um, But it has been revised and um, appendix added in 2011 and 2012. The last page is appendix one. No, there's an appendix old. two. There's an appendix two. How would you like to word the motion, Ray? I, I think you either have to say you're going to enforce the Article 9, or you're just going to say we adopt the ordinance. Okay. Well, we're not. Um, let me go get it. Let me check here, Mary. Pardon? Let me. Oh no, I think I have to go to the file. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, because there's this little there's this small appendix part. One of them has my handwriting all over it from back in the olden days.
as this situation has taught us, it's very important to have the things. All right. The ordinance was revised on the first day of August in 2006. And an appendix was added in 2011 and not advertised until 2012, but it was, um, it was adopted in 2011 and the appendices involve um, the materials that you use when you um, install the sewer, what kind of gravel and sand and that kind of thing. So, um, all right. We have a motion to readopt. So it would be to force Enforce article, or re -adopt. Enforce Article 9. Yeah, yeah, or re-adopt. Yeah. Or re-adopt Article 9. Mary, are you taking public comments motion. at this time? If you make it brief, I'd love to hear your public comment. Um, I would suggest, and I know everybody's approaching this with goodwill, and I, I truly believe that everybody here is, is making a decision based on, on what they think is best, or what they think fits into the legalities, but I would argue, or I would at least note, that when we have to do this level of archival research to figure out what the, the legislation is that governs this process, that it's very hard to make the case that the voters have all the information they needed when they voted for this. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, I'm not looking so, at you to so make a motion. I, okay. I think I'm just. I think the way I would word it would be not to re-adopt the whole ordinance, but to um, enforce to attach or enforce um, Article Nine in relation to the. South Woodstock bond as voted on by the town of Woodstock voters. Article 9 of the Woodstock sewer ordinance. Yeah, the, uh, the, yes, so Article 9 of the Woodstock town of Woodstock sewer ordinance. Yes. Um, as um, revised in August, Can you say August, that one more time, Joe? Adopted in May of 86. Yeah. Originally adopted May 13th, 1986. Yeah. Uh, Carrie, what I said is that to um, enforce or attach Article 9 of the Woodstock, Town of Woodstock Sewer Ordinance um, as it relates to the um, South, South Woodstock treatment plant bond is voted on by the town of Woodstock voters. Okay, thank you. Nikki, did you get that motion? Yes, I have it, Mary. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Motion seconded by John Doton. I'll read that. Motion by Joe Swanson to attach or enforce Article 9 of the Woodstock Sewer Ordinance as it relates to the South Woodstock Wastewater Treatment Plant Bond. Seconded by John Doton. 
I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Abstentions? Motion passes as proposed with one opposition vote from Ray. Thank you. All right. We are at the so back to the <laughs> um, consumption page. We are at the point where we should vote on the sewer billing rates for the annual billing, which typically is mailed around January 31st, and I think it will be. Um, the rates I read before, I'll repeat them. Single rate, $656.92. Two person rate, $985.38. Family rate, $1,313.84. The total increase is 7.40%. The due date will be April 1, 2022. I, I see that there's a question or a comment in the chat. Tess Hunter. From, from the standard. Copy. I'm sorry? Um, I think it just said that someone can email a copy. It was one of the ordinances I didn't see. Can someone email a copy of the wording of the ordinance as it, as it was just passed? Thank you. Did you want the wording of the motion? Yes. Okay, yeah. you can do that. Yeah. All right. All those in favor? Oh, we need a motion to accept the rates for this year's sewer billing. I'll make that motion to adopt the sewer rates as submitted by the um, wastewater treatment accounting. May I have a second? Second. Wait a second. I'll second that. May motion by Mary, second by Ray, to adopt the rates as stated for the 2022 Woodstock sewer billing. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you. And thank you everyone tonight for your patience. I, I know you understand how difficult all of this has been. Thank you for your patience since late summer when this came to us. All right. Do we have any other business to discuss this evening or any other comments that should be made and recorded tonight? Okay. This is almost a record. Yeah. Getting out of here this early. <laughs> With all this, in, with everything yeah. we had tonight, um, I'd like a motion to adjourn the meeting but if we're got, done with our business. Got, um, minutes, Mary. Oh, minutes! Yeah. Oh gosh, yes, we have minutes too. So oh, two meetings or we three, have three meetings. Three meetings. January fourth, which I believe was a budget meeting. No, that was your regular. That, oh, that was our. That was our ten o'clock in the morning meeting. meeting. Yeah. That, that just two, we two weeks one, ago two. feels like it's been since uh, <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> okay. Um, I reviewed those minutes right here in the office one day. All right. 
Motion to accept the, any minutes, all the minutes. Motion. Second. Motion of Joe, second of Ray, to accept all minutes as presented. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. What's next? I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Joe. I'll second. <laughs> motion of Ray seconded by Joe and John. The motion the motion is to adjourn the meeting at eight oh eight. Excellent.